Good day, everybody. Now that we are in the week before Palm Sunday, coming up here on April the 5th, uh, I must make an announcement to you that because of the CDC and because of conference and regulations that are going on right now, we will not have Palm Sunday. Now, of course, I know you're disappointed about that. I am highly disappointed about it. Other than when I was over in Vietnam and Thailand, uh, I never missed, I've never missed a Palm Sunday ever before in my life. And yes, it is a bummer. Uh, of course, also April the 5th being the very first Sunday of the month, and that's when we normally have communion, Holy Communion. We will not be having Holy Communion. So you can do one of two things. You can wait on us. Uh, you can wait till everybody comes back and we'll all share in Holy Communion together. Or if you would like to have Holy Communion with you and your spouse or with you and your family, and even maybe have a couple people over, you can always have Holy Communion at your homes. And yes, I know that clergy are supposed to do that. And an ordained minister is actually supposed to do that. But uh, what we can do is, is have you to have some sort of juice, preferably grape juice, and then some sort of crackers. And then what you can do is just remember what Christ did for those disciples at the Last Supper. In talking to a sister this morning over the phone, uh, she said, I miss everybody. And I, I definitely concur. I miss everybody. I miss all of you good people. And uh, it is uh, unfortunate, uh, but right now we're just going to have to do what we have to do and hang on to our faith, hang strongly to our faith, keep in our prayers, keep in our scripture readings to strengthen us with positive thoughts. So for today, I want to uh, bring to you what all of us know about, and that is looking at points of view. There are right ways and wrong ways to do anything and everything, but all of us have our own points of view and our own thoughts. Everyone sees things from, from different points of views, and we all know that as well. If I were, for example, to describe to you uh, the front of my house, go out into the front and start describing it to you, and we had somebody totally different describe the back of my house, you'd wonder where these two houses were, even though they were the same house. But we need to remember that it, we should re be respectful of each other's points of views. The reason it is important though, for us to consider what God has, has to say about life is that he sees everything from every angle, every angle. God's word can equip us to see things like God does. So if we stay in our scriptures, we can know more about what God would really want us to see from his point of view, the right point of view. From 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34, it says, come back to the right point of view and stop sinning. Some people don't know anything about God. And of course, how sad that is for those who do not know God as their Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Of course, in today's world, we know that, that we now put security cameras on the outside of our homes. God is the ultimate security camera, though, and we need to remember that as well. The Bible declares that even, and, and even records every word that is spoken by every human being in Matthew 12, verse 36. So I, I want to read that to you. Again, from Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, it says, But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. Think about that for just a moment and realize we need to keep ourselves in check. Whenever we feel a lack of wisdom, God's word can help us come back to the right point of view. What would you do without hope? Think about that for just a moment. From 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, it says, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself, 
and God our Father, who loves us and in his grace gave us unfailing courage and a firm hope, encourage you and strengthen you to always do and say what is good. Now I read that kind of slow, so I want to reread it again. May our Lord and Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and in his grace gave us unfailing courage and a firm hope, encourage you and strengthen you to always do and say what is good. Do we realize how important it is for all of us to have hope? Can you imagine dying without any hope? I can't. I cannot imagine that. The Greek word for hope is, is the, in, which is spoken of in this passage that I just read to you, the Greek word is pronounced ellipsis meaning the joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. This salvation is a gift by the grace of our Heavenly Father. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, so we need not be afraid of dying anymore. When we trust entirely in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are blessed with a firm hope. I want to tell you a story I, I looked up and found. It was way back in 1991, the school system in a large city had a program that helped children keep up with their schoolwork during stays in the hospital, if that's where they had to end up. One day, a teacher who was assigned to the program received a routine call asking her to visit a particular child so that when she went there, she would have kind of an update on what all he might need as far as his studies were concerned. She took the child's name and the room number and talked briefly with the child's regular school teacher. We're studying nouns and adverbs in his class right now, the regular teacher said, and I'd be grateful if you could help him understand them so he doesn't fall too far behind. The program teacher went to see the boy, not knowing that he was badly burned and in great pain. Stammering at the sight, she told the boy, I've been sent by your school teacher to help you with nouns and adverbs. When she left that day, she felt like she hadn't accomplished very much. But the very next day, when she came back once again to help, the nurse came to her and said, what did you do to that young man? Well, the teacher, of course, thought that she had done something wrong. But the nurse corrected her and said, no, no, what you did, whatever you did was absolutely right. You don't know what that has meant for us and ultimately what it will mean to him. We've been worried about the young man because he didn't seem to want to survive until yesterday when his whole attitude changed. He's fighting back now. He's responding to our treatment. It's as though he decided to live. Two weeks later, the boy explained that he had given up hope until that program teacher had come. He basically said they wouldn't send a teacher to work on nouns and verb adverbs with me with a dying kid, would they? Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah. That teacher had no idea what she meant to that young man, but she gave that young man hope, and that's something all of us need. God gives his children hope, so we have a divine purpose for living and lose the fear of dying. In his grace, the Lord Jesus Christ has given us a firm hope. I hope all of you know that. I hope all of you realize that. I hope all of you know how much you mean to me. I do miss you. I know that Lori misses you. I miss coming to church and having others come into the church during the week. But more importantly, I really miss you on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights when we have such wonderful fellowship and we're able to get together and talk and talk about Jesus and what he's done for us. Again, I want you to stay in your prayers, stay faithful, stay in God's holy word, pray for each other and help each other out in whatever way you might be able to. God bless all of you.